Hello and welcome back. This is Candace from Candoodle and I am super excited to be guesting in the Lawn Fawn Fans Spring Hop today. I will talk more about the hop and the giveaway as the video goes on. Today we are going to be using some of the new Lawn Fawn Spring release. I absolutely love this release and am obsessed with the bubbles. I've been seeing so many amazing projects on Instagram with doing bubbles on dark and colored paper and I have been staring at it like that gif not knowing how to make it. So I have sat in my craft room and done some investigative work so that I can show you how you can make these fun, realistic rainbow bubbles without being a fine artist. So let's get started. So I am starting with the scripty bubble sentiments and I have the thanks and little mouse set up in my Misty. And I'm gonna start by stamping the thanks on some craft paper using my Gina K Amalgam ink. I'm gonna be using two different color papers today. One is on craft cardstock and one is on black paper to show the difference between the two and make a comparison for how to do bubbles on both of them. Once I'm done with that, I am gonna clean it with a baby wipe and then get my black paper. I am stamping it down with Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink. And so because this is a pigment ink, I am gonna heat set it before we move on and do our coloring, just so it doesn't smear all over the place. Ask me how I know. There was a version before this which got smeared. Anyways, I am gonna heat set the other one, which doesn't really need it, but I did it just in case. So now moving into the coloring. To make this look like a bubble, we are gonna be using colored pencils. That's what they're called, right? I always want to say pencil crayons. My Canadian is showing. I am trying so hard to go with the colored pencils because I know that's what everybody in the craft world calls them. Anyways, this is a Prismacolored white pencil crayon. Oh, colored pencil. Colored pencil. And I am just setting down a thin white layer. I didn't push super hard, but I just wanted enough there so that the next colors we're using are going to build on top. So I just have some simple rainbow colors. I will put in the description which ones of my Prisma colors I did use because I wrote them down this time. And I am just going through the rainbow and I'm kind of trying to blend these together doing Roy G. Biv. I'm not being super careful with my blending. This is probably like the fourth time I've broken out these pencil crayons. But what I am trying to do is leave a white highlight space towards the top left and the bottom right because that's going to make it look kind of rounded um, with where you're placing the highlights that way it gives it that rounded bubbly sort of look and this is super forgiving it's going to look great either way i'm not a great colorist and i think it looked pretty cool in the end so i am going with my once over of the rainbow and just making sure everything is nice and blended and then once i'm happy with it i am going to come back in with my white colored pencil and really reinforce those highlights on the top left and the bottom right. So I'm just pushing down a lot harder. Um, and as I'm doing that, I'm also gonna put a light layer of white over all the colors just to kind of dull it down a bit because the rainbow was a bit aggressive to be bubbly. Um, so I kind of wanted it more of a pastel tone. And then once that is done, I'm gonna put it back in my Misty because I haven't moved my stamp. And I'm gonna stamp down with my Amalgam ink again. This is just gonna kind of go over any of the areas where we might have went out of the lines a little bit and just make it look a lot cleaner. You could also take a Copic multi-liner and do the same thing. So I'm going to do the exact same process on the black paper. I fast forwarded a little bit because you don't need to see me do the same thing twice um, with the white colored pencil and then I'm coming in again with the exact same colors in the rainbow. The colors do look a bit different on black paper even though we have that white base layer underneath. Um, I find they're almost like a little bit more of a pastel kind of tone like they show less true to the color on the black than on the craft paper and so I did the same thing. I went through the rainbow just kind of blended them together and left my highlight at the top left and the bottom right and then I'm coming back in again to really reinforce those highlights just with my colored pencil. You are going to want to come in with a very sharp pencil to do this so you're not going out of the lines. Also, I did another step after this, but you could totally leave it as it is right now with this really soft sort of bubble look to it, but I did want to white heat emboss mine, so I did come in with my anti-static powder pouch, and then I stamped down with Versamark ink, again because I used my Misty, I didn't have to worry about the stamp shifting or anything, and then I came in with my white embossing powder, and I am going to heat set that before we move forward. 
And so next I am taking my little mouse, which comes from that same set, and stamping him down. I created this little template so I knew where to put the bubble wand, and the bubble wand is actually from the Bubbles of Joy stamp set. Um, so I got that out and I just did a little bit of masking so the bubble wouldn't um, stamp down. So I just had the wand so it looked like he was blowing that thanks. I didn't color it on camera because I didn't want to waste too much time, um, but I just used my Prisma colors for that as well. For the one on the black card, I actually used that template that was stamped down on the white paper and colored it with Copics and fussy cut around it and then used that black marker to just go around the edges um, because if I were to stamp down on black ink on black paper, you wouldn't really see where you're coloring. Um, so I thought that was the easiest way around and it looks great in the end. And so here I am just scoring my card bases and I am going to glue down my little mouse. And I was going to stop here because I'm very into clean and simple cards these days, but I'm super glad that I kept going. I was a little worried I was going to ruin it at multiple points, but I'm super glad that I... So I got my Misty back out and I took some of the bubbles from both the Bubbles of Joy and Scripty Bubble Sentiment stamp sets and I'm just kind of stamping them around to fill the open space. There was no sort of rhyme or reason to this. Um, I just didn't want any super large areas of blank space and I am doing it with my amalgam ink on the craft paper and then I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on the black card but I am going to use Versamark ink and white heat emboss it on the black card and then we're going to move on to the coloring of the bubbles which is what inspired this whole video to begin with. So I was actually inspired by this card on Instagram and I thought it was so amazing and I had no idea how they did it. Um, but after sitting and experimenting, it's really not that difficult. All you have to do is put some highlights around the perimeter of the bubble on the inside. I started with the white pencil crayon and then I went in and put the rainbow on top. Um, I didn't try and shove the whole rainbow into every single bubble. Um, I just kind of tried to get a few colors in there and have the whole rainbow represented within each kind of cluster. I put my highlights towards the top left and bottom right, but I did move them around for each of the bubbles to add some kind of depth and dimension, and you just kind of go with it. Um, there was no real rhyme or reason, but I'm really happy with how it turned out in the end, um, and so I would encourage you to give this a try too. While I'm here, I do want to talk about the hop. I am so excited to be guesting. This is a hop that I have loved watching for the last couple years since it started. Um, it's organized by my crafty friend Carrie Rhodes who is absolutely lovely. So when she messaged me earlier this week asking if I could fill in a guest spot, I was thrilled and said yes before even looking at my schedule. And so I'm super happy to be part of this hop. It is sponsored by Only One Life Creations who is kindly donating a $50 gift card to the shop. So all you have to do to enter is comment and subscribe at each stop on the hop, who are all absolutely wonderful women, um, and then you'll be entered for a chance to win, and the winner will be announced on March 20th. So I'm super, super happy to be here, and so excited to be guesting along with these absolutely incredibly talented crafters. And so while I've been talking, I'm just adding some white highlights. I was super nervous that I was going to wreck the card when I started doing this, but I am so glad that I just went with it. I tried to fill in the natural highlights on some of the bubbles and then any sort of open spaces with stars and little dots and things like that. I will say my friend Steph of World of Papercraft, who is also in the hop, did an awesome video on how to highlight that I'll link to here. It was super helpful in helping me learn how to do some of these things too. And I just did that on both of the cards and stopped once I was happy. And this is how the final cards turned out on the black paper as well as on the craft card stock. So you'll have to let me know which you prefer down in the comments. If you are new around here and found me through the hop, hello and welcome. I hope you'll subscribe and stick around. I post a video every single week. Thank you so much to Carrie and the rest of the Lawn Fawn fans for having me on today. I'm so thankful. I really appreciate the time that you spend here with me. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and you can always find me over on Instagram at Candoodle Creations. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!